We are at Malala Day in Secondary School, where I'm now coming for her pride team that has just come to help our girls, especially from grade 10 to 12, in terms of sanitary knowledge. As soon as the girls and the facilitators settled in the classroom provided by the school, we then displayed our menstrual hygiene materials that we used to conduct the outreach program. The girls then further welcomed us with a poem. Our desire is to go higher, to inspire, not to retire or inspire. So open up your minds, eyes, ears, for the champions are here to present a poem full of knowledge. So listen with courage and energy. Do not feel damaged, savage, lavaged. That is what we call period poverty. So our friends are here to help you 
ensure that you guys have a beautiful period experience for at least one day. Because the products are going to give you for free will be enough for you to use for 12 months. So next year, you will move around. You can use the product. The resolution is the point. Raw materials were then distributed amongst the girls by one of the facilitators from Whisper a Dream Foundation that were to be used to teach the girls how to make reusable sanitary towels. As the stencil was going round and being used by some of the girls, Mary from Whisper a Dream Foundation shared her own school experience with menstruation. I told her, okay, me this happened, this and this. So the only, the only thing, the only thing that I, uh, I, I thought of using is in my stocking. Those, that's, that's, that's how I was shown. He was able, he, he almost wanted to chase me out of the class. I don't have stocking. As the girls were still preparing their materials, Annie then shared an emergency menstrual hack which is the use of toilet paper, commonly known as tissue, by wrapping it into the shape of a pad. Mm-hmm. So, why is it 
Pauline then showed the girls various menstrual hygiene materials and how they are used. With the use of a female organ dummy, she illustrated how to insert, remove, and properly dispose of a tampon after use. After which, the facilitators then distributed different sized menstrual cups amongst the girls and gave a detailed explanation on how a menstrual cup is used. With the girls having finalized cutting their materials, a facilitator then showed what the expected end result of the reusable sanitary towels should look like, with the help of a factory made one. Instructions on how to sew the materials together were then given to the girls and they began sewing with guidance from the facilitators. The facilitators then took this as an opportunity to incorporate a mental health awareness talk to the girls by making them aware of the effects of menstruation to their mental health. environment for the equity of girls in Zambia. We chose uh, Malala because For Her Pride is dedicated to um, reaching people in the rural areas and the rural communities. So we, were, we have a dedicated team of researchers who um, recommended Malala, which is in Chikakata district. Of it's important to teach the girls how to make reusable pads because reusable pads are sustainable. Um, because we live in a third world country, it's not every child, uh, girl child, that has access to disposable pads. So in, a, in the rural areas, you have um, girls that use all you know different kinds of materials uh, just for them to be in school, for them to function. So to teach them what materials are good for them during their menstrual cycles helps them stay in school, it helps them with the sustainability because when you um, are able to make a reusable pad, you can use it for 12 months. So you don't necessarily have to be buying uh, pads every other month, um, especially with you know places that they are at, they are in, you know, the rural areas of Zambia. We face challenges almost all the time because, um, like I mentioned, it is in the rural areas. So because Zambia is diverse, it has different languages. So we have language barriers, we have girls that are not necessarily uh, very open to talking about uh, menses because of the culture 
that has been taught about them. So you have, you know, a breaking communication, them feeling shy to ask questions. And if they don't ask questions, it's difficult for us to help as well. So we do have, we do face quite a number of challenges. I don't think it's doing enough just yet. Um, there's so much more that needs um, to be implemented to end period poverty because I don't know if you know about um, period tax, right? So there's taxes that are that are put on on disposable pads that make disposable pads very expensive. Even for us as an organisation, it's very difficult, or rather very expensive, to get disposable pads to even donate. So there is so much more that the Zambian government needs to do to help um, mitigate period poverty, to rather end. It was a success because they were very um, they were very excited to learn the skill. Uh, because it's one thing to give a reusable pad or disposable pad, it's another thing to teach them because when we leave here, even if we didn't come back, they still have been left with that skill of how to how to make a reusable pad. And we even spoke about how to make it an enterprise. You know, they can then learn, teach others. Firstly, secondly, they can also have clubs in the school to make pads and sell as well, so it can be an income from, for them as well. My name is Chiorista Mutilia from Ayala Day Secondary School. Uh, the program started, we were taught a lot of things uh, about period poverty. We were taught on how we can maintain personal hygiene as girls. We were also taught on the type of, different types of sanitaries that you can use as a girl. And we also looked at, and we were also taught about the skill of making your own parts using some materials, like stinging uh, materials. If you have them, you can be able to make your own sanitary parts, whereas to reduce the period poverty among girls. So we had the team, it came, and we just want to say thank you for all the knowledge that we have been impacted with. And we make sure, for sure, it, does, it didn't just end from me, but we continue with the skills, teaching others, and even when we complete with school, it can be a very good starting point for one who is business-minded. Like you can open up something like you start a business on your own to help you with some things you may need as you need one. Now that the girls have gotten the knowledge about the reusable parts, we are asking the For Her Pride group to extend their help towards the abortion block and maybe the showers for the girls. For the same, can help towards the girl child during their menses since after using the, the toilet they need to at least bath especially for those who do not feel comfortable or those who mess themselves up so we really ask for that help because right now the toilets that are there they are not user friendly the same toilets that are just a few about eight of them they are used by the boys and the girls the school right now is running from preschool up to grade 12 with about 957 pupils yes. um, so we have a number of projects that we're working with um, the school there's a number of projects that they have um, requested from us like for instance the building of an ablution had requested this from us and this is something that we're working towards. Um, also, away from that, uh, For Her Pride offers sponsorship for higher education. So then, that um, the girls we speak to and interact with can then after, in, after grade 12, can we can then um, give them the platform to get into higher education. Yes, the trip to Malala was a huge success. Of course, when we came in, the girls were a little bit, you know, on the law. They were not sure if they can ask questions. They were shy. They were a bit reserved. But after, after we had our icebreakers with the girls, we sang some songs and did a few dances. The girls were then flexible and able to ask questions. So they were able to now get into it because we humbled ourselves to their level. So they felt comfortable talking to us because they thought, hey, if these guys can dance with us, if these girls can sing with us, then definitely we can open up to them. 
they were able to open up to us on the awkward questions that they don't feel so comfortable asking their moms and dads for fear of being judged. But we gave them all the correct answers from both the medical uh, background and just general knowledge. They had questions that have um, things that they are taught to do here in the village, which is a little bit unhealthy. Some of them were okay, some of them were not, but we were able to tell them which ones were okay and which ones were not and why that was so and how that affects their health. But those were happy. They were very receptive. The response was beautiful, they were happy, they had smiles, they were glad to receive the gifts that we brought them, which is books from, um, we got them books, we got them uh, pads themselves, disposable and reusable pads, yeah, and a mini backpack, and that made them so happy. The response was beautiful, we played games after the outreach project, so yeah, the, the reception was brilliant, the girls were happy. We could tell that they enjoyed it. To the head of the department, to all the members that came to teach us for free, for your free knowledge, we say thank you and you shouldn't just end from our school but do so even to other schools so that even our fellow girls out there may be able to have the skill that we have, we have been impacted with. We say thank you for everything.